I consider this opportunity very, very carefully, particularly in light of the amazing work of Lorena Zarate, who served as HIC uh, president for the last eight years. Uh, I am fully aware that she leaves very big shoes uh, behind her for anybody to feel. Now, I guess that the main reason why I decided to accept this challenge is because HIC mission ambition aligns very, very closely with my own beliefs and professional and personal experience. Um, as I stated in my uh, letter of acceptance, I have admired the work of HIC for many decades. And it was precisely people like uh, uh, Gilles Deschamps, Sean Turner, Enrique Ortiz, Anna Sugranius, and Hilda Herzer, among others, that really not only inspired me, but provoked me to devote, uh, dedicate my work uh, to serve uh, those who really build Brand, uh, maintain and manage cities uh, on a daily basis, despite uh, seeing their rights uh, to be treated as uh, entitled citizens violated again and again. Now, professionally, over the last 35 years, I had the rare and enormous opportunity to work with grassroots organizations across many countries in uh, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and to less extent, the Middle East and Europe. Um, observing closely how women and men, girls and boys, navigate uh, multiple injustices that manifest and are connected not only to access to housing and land, but also to livelihoods, water, sanitation, energy, and a whole range of social protection measures taught me something really important. And this is that the main violations against human rights do not just happen in an overt way, but very much through very pervasive, quiet, and cumulative processes. I see the work of HIC uh, precisely targeting uh, the rendering these processes visible and counteracting them. And this is very, very much in line with the work I do on a daily basis. Last but not least, the work of HIC resonates uh, for me at a very personal level. Being a woman in a still uh, prevailing patriarchal world, a working single mom, an activist, academic, uh, a tenant for many years of my life, an immigrant, um, all those conditions have taught me in a very big way that the struggles we face are always collective and that the only answer to them is through collective action. HIC has historically uh, done uh, an extraordinary work in championing the right to the social production of habitat. And in doing so, it has maintained and continued to maintain key attributes of acting as a decentralized, democratic, inclusive, horizontal, and non bureaucratic platform. Um, I see the main challenges ahead as, on the one hand, maintaining and consolidating those very unique attributes and capacities of HIC, but also deepening and expanding them to further fields. Um, I have, if you look at my campaign statement, I have highlighted five different specific challenges that I see ahead of us. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate on them here, but I just want to add two additional uh, challenges. The first one concerns with what I would see as the the need to provincialize the right for the social production of habitat. And what I mean by this is that um, very often uh, what we do and what we see is a visibilization of the struggles, the fights and the realities of those living in larger cities. Um, and so much less uh, of those women and men, girls and boys, that uh, live in smaller cities, small towns, uh, and in a whole range of human settlements that are not even seen as part of the urban world. Uh, I think that we need to capture and to advocate much more closely for their experiences. How is that they face processes of extractivism, of exclusion and marginalization? The second key challenge I would see is as connecting the dots. Um, by connecting the dots, I'm not talking about connecting the dots across themes or issues. Uh, 
or rights, but very much dots across uh, experiences that seem to be, and realities that seem to be seemingly different, yet speak to common struggles. And this is what we are witnessing probably in recent days, emerging across uh, Hong Kong, Iraq, Lebanon, Algeria, um, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Chile, just to name a few, uh, a few contexts. In a very recent interview published uh, by Le Monde um, with uh, Bertrand uh, Badi, he describes these processes as something that he calls the second act of globalization. And he highlights two important uh, characteristics of this moment in history. The first one he uh, defines as a moment of inclusion, in the sense uh, that somehow fewer, perhaps, people's realities and stories escape the world stage. Of course, there are many that still are not in that world stage, which is the point I made before. The second important point that he makes as a characteristic of this second act of uh, globalization or uh, uh, mondialization is uh, that of um, uh, reciprocity, that of fluidity, the mobility and the interrelatedness that comes uh, and brings forward the possibility of different, um, different social movements and forms of popular uh, mobilization connecting their struggles and demand with each other. Um, I think that above all what we are witnessing is a very particular moment in history where history is being written more and more by social movements and through social mobilization. Uh, and this and the new acquired and revived capacities of social movements to act both for social and political change uh, is somehow an emerging arena where Hick has a very important role to play. I would like to take this opportunity to thank HIP members for the vote of trust um, and also for the many messages received over the last couple of weeks, the opportunities for exchange, dialogue and to get uh, to know each other. Um, regardless of the outcome of election, I very much uh, welcome and I'm grateful for the opportunity to become a closer member of the HIC family and community. Many thanks. <laughs>